Hey guys, I'm Joshua Finn with J and H Aerospace, and today we're going to do something very different from what you have seen on this channel basically ever before. I have been teasing about this on social media, and you guys have gone basically bananas <laughs> about this. Why my joke here? Well, this is an airplane called a top banana. This is not the one that y'all have been seeing on social media. This, you'll notice, has not my AMA number, which is 875391, uh, different AMA number. This airplane was designed by the late, not designed, was built by the late Frank Hodgson of Thermal Thumbers of Metro Atlanta. I found this airplane in his estate, and it had never been flown. Covering was loose. Uh, the airplane, as I found, was not really in trim, uh, in checking the balance and whatnot. It was set up as an old rules E36. Now, what E36 is, is the basic, um, I guess you'd say, low-cost AMA electric free flight class. Back when it was first brought in, it was kind of like a P-30 of electric classes and it was set up for brushed motors because that's what was available back then. This airplane was set up for that. At the time I got the airplane, the rules had recently changed to be very brushless and lithium polymer batteries and all that stuff. So, I set the airplane up to fly on that and I got a timer from Texas Timers, which I'll show you here in a second and you'll understand why it's a problem. So this is the timer, and the way that it works is it is an electrical and mechanical timer, and this is no criticism of Texas timers, this is what was available at the time. So, you wind up your timer here, set this little latch right here, which is connected to a micro switch back here, and then this whole thing, you plug in uh, your speed controller and servo over here. When you're ready to go, you press this button and let go and that is when the motor comes alive. So the motor throttles up and now you have to reach over here and release that little gizmo and let this thing go and when that pops up your uh, motor shuts off. And then after some time later this thing has a, um, a 555 timer in it it pops your dethermalizer, and you can program how long that dethermalizer goes. Here's the problem. This bale here fits very tight, plus it's an extra thing to do. So I have to get up here, and I have to press my start button, or back here, and then I have to flick that thing loose and shove the airplane in the air. Now, this thing has a safety switch, so to speak, that after 30 seconds of continuous running of the motor, it shuts the motor down, period, and pops the dethermalizer. This thing, not with this motor, was set loose in some of my trimming. I had learned how to trim it, was having fun, set it loose, and I thought I caught that bail, and I didn't and the airplane climbed for 30 seconds and dethermalized into a, um, an orchard of, uh, of pecan trees. And it sat in the top of a pecan tree about 100 feet up for a long time. You'll notice this fuselage is stained horribly. Even though it's covered with uh, solar film, that's mold. That is the accumulation of mold for this fuselage to have been in that tree for over a year. The wing came down after about three or four months because the rubber bands broke. Eventually the dethermalizer retainer line on the uh, stabilizer broke and it came down after about eight months. The stabilizer, you know, looks pretty good. There's a little bit of staining in here but not much. Bottom line is uh, the fuselage was broken in half all the wiring was trashed, except for this wiring, believe it or not. Um, and the, this timer actually does remain functional. But the, the bottom line is, that kind of put me out of that for a while. 
and um, so the airplane sat derelict for four years, the past four years. About uh, three weeks ago, I got tired of this and said, it's time to get going. Plus, somebody in the uh, flight test community got me these uh, timers, modern timers to run on, on there. So this is the uh, easy timer that you can get from Steven Zero. It's made by Forge Electronics. Uh, pretty good timer. A little quirky to trim. I'm still getting or, uh, tuned. I'm still getting used to it. But the bottom line is, you're going to see that uh, you're going to see a couple flights of this going off. Uh, just quick test flights. We'll do more on it later. Now for the real story. For the 2022 National Free Flight Society uh, Gas Power One Design event, the top banana is going to be one of the airplanes, specifically the top banana 200 one half A size version. This one has a one half A engine on it. So, I have never this is being recorded afterwards, so obviously this is all plumbed up. You're going to see me kind of go backwards in the progression. But the bottom line is, start when this where this video footage starts, you will be seeing me having never ever flown a glow-powered free flight model ever in my life. Prepare for some laughter. It's going to be bad. It's going to be real bad. Um, I'm sure there is much more in my future, but the bottom line is, there's some humor for you to enjoy. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. You're going to like this. Uh, fun tidbits, though. This is a kit that is available on our website. You have to supply your own engine. You have to supply your own timer. Uh, those of you who want to know, uh, the engines, you can find them on eBay fairly readily and on RC Groups. Uh, timers as well. If you um, don't want to wait around looking for timers, Mike Woodhouse at freeflightsupplies.co.uk has timers like this one that you can use. And they, uh, they work quite well. They're very reliable timers based on a uh, similar mechanism to this. And some of them are actually lighter. Um, all of the plumbing for the engine is available from texastimers.com, so check them out for all of your plumbing needs for, for the engines. Uh, they have remote shutoffs and whatnot, so um, the remote shutoffs work very, very well. But that's really the sum of it. This is a laser cut kit that we supply now, and you can use it for E36 because it includes uh, firewalls for all the different setups, uh, a whole bunch of different popular electric motors, plus uh, radial mount and not radial mount, the uh, one half A um, engine mounts, and and so on. So very very customized kit for a variety of options. Um, includes doculam covering. You can put tissue over the top of it for stiffness if you're going to fly faster setups. Um, like this medallion would probably be something where you might want to, uh, to do this, which is why I did it. Uh, some of your milder E36 setups you don't need to. Um, but just stuff to make sure that wing's nice and stiff. Um, my stab is relatively stiff even without the tissue on it, so you can get away with that fairly well. Uh, the reality is that either setup is stiffer than this old guy, uh, which is quite flexy. So, there you go. Anyway, enjoy the fun. Coming for you. <laughs> Don't 
don't need tea on the cars. Okay, much better. Okay, one half a top banana here. Top banana 200, uh, 200 square inches flat. Uh, not even finished doping it. You can still see some blushing on the on the wings there and whatnot because I haven't cleaned all that up because it doesn't have a second coat of dope on it. And engine is all, it's a medallion 049, so I've got it uh, covered up to keep sand out of it. Don't have a timer or anything. It's 5.3 ounces, as you see it here. Tissue over doculam covering. So let's do a test glide. And the wind is definitely blowing pretty good. Definitely seems a little nose heavy, but I could learn to chuck it properly. Yeah, it's nose heavy. That's sad. It's sad just how nose heavy it is. We'll get that fixed though. Okay, stuck a shim under it. Still very nose heavy. Interesting. So what is this that we're looking at? This is a top banana. The most rednecked one half A nostalgia setup ever. Yeah, that works. And what is this engine that you put on here? This is a Cox Medallion 049, which by all accounts is a really nice engine. Now this worked just fine earlier. Why is it not working now? Probably because I'm being a moron. I just wish that I knew the way in which I am being a moron. I think I need like a something to pinch the fuel line while I'm doing this. Three hands. Three hands would be nice. Get enough pressure in there. Get 15 or 20 seconds worth of engine run. We'll be happy with 8 or 10 at this point. Alright. So at this point, we have to come around from behind and apply electricity to the problem. You'll want to back up at this point. Come on. Also, pinching off the fuel line works. Okay, so I'll show you in a minute. We've got the fuel system plumbed up now. Airplane is finished out, looking nice, all that good stuff. Um, I have put some packing under the tail here, and I've got a bunch of weight on it. So uh, with the uh, the old Tatone timer up here, um, airplane is it ends up nose heavy, and that's the problem of. You see, the nose is fairly long on these. Normally, your firewall would be back about here, and that makes things a lot easier. But, 
Um, anyway, the airplane's under six ounces ready to go. In general, uh, pretty good strong aircraft here. So we're going to give it a few more test glides. Uh, you've seen it me fire it up by now. Um, and that was before I got the timer mounted. Now I've got a timer mounted. Plumbing's a little bit better. So we'll see how that goes. So here we go. Nice glide. Um, could be a little bit floatier, but not bad. Now we're going to have to watch for our turn and glide. Because it's tending to turn to the left. Although a left turn in the glide is not a big deal. Uh, a lot of people prefer it. Um, I like to go right on the top banana. I just think that's a, an easier way to trim this particular aircraft. Yeah, pretty strong uh, left turn bias. Okay, so what I've done is, I don't know if you can see this, I added a little strip of 1 16th square up here on this uh, railing to raise my left wing slightly, so that gives me right, uh, gets rid of my left hand stab tilt. I also added a gurney flap to the right side, so I'm trying to force a right turn. I also have a cat who is doing her daggone this to trip me up. She is. Yeah, you are so mean to me. All right, let's see what we can do here. Well, uh, shedding wheels and everything. All right, fixed my wheel retainer. Also add a tiny little more shim in the back. Let's see how this goes now. Oh, right turn. Very wide. Nice. Yeah, let's try one more. Oh, yeah. There we go. Very nice. Yep. You gotta be able to shut off the fuel flow to fly it. It's not wanting to shut off. You ornery little thing. All right, well, I'm gonna need to go inside and get a pair of pliers. Well, we don't know which caused it to cut off yet. Suddenly becoming starved for fuel, or what? Hey! <laughs> okay, so we are simply low on pressure right now. Nice. Needs more power, but. So I flew this thing again <clears throat> off camera, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, got the engine running a little hotter and it spiraled into the right and took off the tail, broke the prop, and tore up the center section of the stab. So I've given it a test glide. We're going to be hoping for the best here. You go someplace else. I should add, we took out some rudder trim and all of that such like. Who 
knows how long that's gonna go. He's a crap timer. Okay, so we had a flyaway with this airplane, and I actually got it back. Now, you don't see the wing or anything, because I've got that removed to explain uh, what happened. So, this fuel line is silicon fuel uh, line from Texas Timers, and it's very thin um, and very easily squished off, which is kind of the point. You want it to be easily squished off so you can get a quick... Um, shutdown of your engine very precisely, very reliably. Here is the issue. The way that this works is that I have my pressure bladder down here that uh, squirts, you know, fuel under pressure through this assembly and on through and then back up to my needle valve. Right here on this timer, if I press my release, the timer comes across and it pinches that off or so we would think. The reality is it kind of slides off to the side there. And I thought I had it enough, but I didn't. And you can demonstrate this by on the up upstream side, if I, you see some of the fuel in there, when I squeeze this, you can see this moving around, which means I don't have a good seal here. The solution, which I have now determined, by actually running the engine without flying it, so that I don't get a repeat, is this little device right here. This is a piece of 1 8 inch aluminum tubing, and it is flared on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fuel line and I'm going to slide this guy over it, flared engine up, so I've taken it off of the needle valve assembly. Let's slide this around. I'm going to go ahead and install this back on to my carburetor. Maybe. This part I'm still getting a little used to. Alright, there we go. And now I'm going to slide this around and into that assembly there. So now you can see it has everything centered in there into the middle of that loop. And now, when I press go, and my timer works its way around here, eventually pinches off right there. Now if I squeeze this, you can see air bubbles moving around here, but you don't see any down here at all. In fact, even if I squeeze it here to, you know, pressurize this, that bubble doesn't move. That means we have an actual seal right here. Now the engine will shut down reliably. Um, and I've tested this repeatedly, and it does work. Uh, so what you'll see next are some flights. This is actually filmed after those, showing how things work. So, there you go.
can't ask for better than that. Well, I can, it's nose heavy, but it's also going into a tree. Or not. Nice. <laughs> And off to another tree to decorate. Which one will it be this time? Thunk. gonna hit this time. Please not a fence post. Wow. Okay, I hope you have enjoyed some of my follies and successes in working with this aircraft. I uh, hope it's given you some ideas for how to set up glow-powered free-flight airplanes. Um, there will be more installations in this, so I've, uh, I feel like this is a good break point uh, in terms of giving you an opportunity to see the airplane flying around. I've not talked a whole lot about the exact trimming adjustments that I made. I've talked about them a little bit, uh, but in the future we're going to focus in on that some more. i will also show you some longer engine runs from this under control rather than, you know, just letting the fuel line not do its thing. That was so annoying. Uh, but anyway, questions, comments, put them in the comment section below. Uh, anything else you'd like to see us doing with glow-powered models, let me know. So, we'll see you. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.